Adam's Film Reviews, The Last Days of American Crime, 2020. The world is in chaos. Criminals, we run these streets. But the government was about to fight back. 30 seconds! That signal freezes you. It stops you from doing anything illegal. They use the signal to kill your brother. I want to use it to steal their money. What do you say, Brick? You a man who can help me steal $30 million? Because your brother thought you were. What about the girl? You ever hear that expression? Behind every great man is a woman. I'm just a girl who likes fast cars and big numbers. What's their angle? In the night of the signal, cops turn in all the weapons. One thing you're going to learn about me is that I'm all about timing. Adapted from the 2009 graphic novel of the same name, The Last Days of American Crime is a newly released action thriller film on Netflix, directed by Olivier Megaton and written by Carl Jadusek. Yes, that'll do. What's more, it's currently sitting on 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, so hell. I'd best to see what it's all about. Now, before I start, this film is punishingly long at 149 minutes. If you're even tempted to watch this film, bring a pillow and some snacks. You're in for the long haul. The Last Days of American Crime introduces us to a near future world where the US government is preparing to activate something known as the American Peace Initiative, API. Designed as a signal to be broadcast across all 50 states, the API reprograms a person's brain, preventing them from committing crime. And there's just 24 hours to go until it's switched on. Enter Graham Brick, played by Edgar Ramirez, a sort of poor man's Gerard But Brick is a career criminal, once working closely with his brother, who was arrested and sent to prison a year prior. After finding out that his brother has died in prison, he is met by Kevin Cash, played by Michael Pitt, and his girlfriend Shelby Dupree, played by... Anna Brewster. Kevin knew Brick's brother in prison and promises a way to get revenge on the government and go down in history while they're at it. See, when the API is activated, no one will want to commit any crime, including spending the money that they may have got from a previous heist. Thus, this dirty money has been rounded up by the government and we'll all be in one place when the API is activated. The plan then? Disrupt the API for long enough to get in, get the cash and flee to Canada. But what Brick and Kevin don't know is that Shelby is really working for the FBI. Oh, and what Brick and Shelby don't know, but sadly the audience are well aware, is that Kevin is a total psychopathic git, ready to betray anyone for his own sick pleasure. Okay, so there's the plan, but now we need to wade through at least an hour of interminable tone-deaf action between Brick and his former criminal associates. Well, Kevin does stuff and Shelby's tough girl persona dips and meanders like a broken roller coaster. There's also a subplot involving a cop and his pursuit of violent justice while the ticking clock of the API signal continues in the background. The Last Days of American Crime it doesn't deserve a 0% rating, I'll tell you that much. I never really wanted to stop watching it, but I did feel the urge to pause it, to eat, sleep, drink, possibly read Crime and Punishment from cover to cover. Some reviewers have pointed out that it's been released at possibly the worst time ever, considering the protest, movements and anti-police feeling currently in America and the rest of the world, but that's not the film's fault. What is the film's fault is that it seriously needs something. I wonder what it'd be like if it was directed by someone like Guy Ritchie, someone who could bring some dark humour in and make it more fun. Hell, stick a stuntman in as director like it's Stratton and Sam Hargreave, and we could have at least had some awesome choreographed fight scene. Instead, Megaton's direction feels plodding and dreary at best. The worst crime for me is there never seems to be any real complications. Even betrayals are dealt with pretty easily. Something comes up, Brick fights it, it's done. Great. The Last Days of American Crime should have been a vehicle for Kurt Russell to return as Snake Plissken. It should have had something to say. It should definitely have been an hour shorter. Instead, it just kind of exists. Is it the worst film ever? Nah. The performances are fine too, and it sure looks nice. 
it just needed some serious editing. On balance, I wouldn't waste your time watching it if I were you. I feel like one of us is going to take a bullet tonight. You go first.